Hello, and welcome to the sixth video in the Getting Started with the STA UHD Producer Plugin video tutorial series. The UHD Producer Plugin, made by Sonic Tier Audio, is a new panning plugin that allows for flexible panning and monitoring of immersive formats that Pro Tools doesn't directly support. When you're done with your mixing and ready to commit your work, due to the large number of outputs you might be using with the STA UHD Producer Plugin, there are some unique options open to you with regard to printing or rendering your mix. This tutorial will discuss three ways you can do it using the STA UHD Producer Plugin and Pro Tools. Experienced users of Pro Tools are familiar with the different mixed out options available to us. Things like internal bounce, bounce to disk, offline bounce, commit, and more. There is a limitation though. Pro Tools can only render or bounce to the extent of the IO paths that Pro Tools supports. That means that most versions of Pro Tools can only bounce up to 7.1 mixes or up to 7.1.2 for Pro Tools 12.8 and later. So, to get the job done with the formats that the STA UHD Producer Plugin supports, we need to look at a different workflow. Within the STA UHD Producer Plugin, there are three modes of operation and two ways that you can render your mix. The rendering process is actually very simple. Perhaps the hardest part of the workflow is finding the feature. Don't worry, it's easy to find if you know where to look. The first step is to open the STA UHD Producer Plugin on any mono, stereo, 5.0 or 7.0 track. By default, you'll see the basic panning view as you're seeing here. The next step is to click the expanded view button in the lower right hand corner. The mode buttons we're looking for are in the mix window, so I'll click the mix button to show the mix window, both the basic view with the matrix assignment section as well as the expanded view. You'll find the mode buttons in the upper part of the expanded view, and by default, the mode will be set to play mode. Play mode is easy to describe. If you're in the active process of mixing where you're starting and stopping playback, writing automation, or any of the other things that we typically do during the mixing process, the mode that you want to be using is play mode. The first mix down method is one that will give you multiple mono files, one for each channel of your surround mix. As with many workflows, the order of the steps can be important. When rendering is done, it's done in real time based upon the playback of your Pro Tools session. That said, this first step is technically optional, but really recommended. Select the area on the timeline that you want to render. If your timeline and edit selection are linked, as it is here, you can make that selection in the playlist area, but what is key is what will be played back, so the timeline selection is what really matters. Along those same lines, it's generally a good idea to turn off loop playback if it happens to be enabled. Remember, your render is based upon playback. If your playback loops, so will your render. Once that's all set up, open any of the STA UHD producer plugins on a mono, stereo, 5.0 or 7.0 track. Since all of these plugins communicate to a common summing engine, it doesn't matter which track you choose to open the plugin. Navigate to the mode menu as we did before. I'll then change from play mode to save and files mode. As soon as you choose this menu item, you'll be prompted to choose a destination location for the new files. I'll create a folder for these files for simplicity's sake. The last part of the process will be to play your session. Again, what is rendered will be based upon the playback of your session, which is why I turned off loop playback and established a selected area of my timeline first, but you could certainly just start and stop playback at any point manually. What will you get? If we now take a look inside the new folder that I created when I specified a destination, you'll see that I have a number of mono audio files. They are named and numbered according to the channel order that you see on the Y axis of the STA UHD producer plugins matrix section. So in this case, where I'm rendering a 10.2 mix, STA 10201 would be the left channel, STA 10202 would be the right channel, STA 10203 would be your center channel, and so on. The routing assignments that you make don't impact this naming convention. An interleaved audio file is a single audio file that includes a number of distinct audio channels. The classic example of this would be a Red Book audio file, which is a stereo mix encapsulated in a single audio file. We can easily create a single interleave file of a surround mix using the STA UHD producer plugin. The steps for doing this are pretty much the same as what we just did to create multiple mono files. Set your render area, turn off loop playback, and then go to the mode menu. This time though, you'll choose save one file. You'll then be prompted to choose a destination, and then you'll play your session, just as we did before. The difference is in the result. 
you'll now see that we have a single file of my 10.2 mix named STA Multi 10.2. Embedded in this single file are the individual channels of the mix in the same order as they appear in the Y axis of the matrix section of the STA UHD Producer Plugins mix window. Experienced users of Pro Tools know that when it comes to mix down, there are a number of techniques that can be employed. Bounce to disc and bounce to track or internal bounce being the two most popular methods. Before we wrap up this tutorial, let's talk briefly about using the internal bounce method using the UHD producer plugin. In the second tutorial of this series, we discussed the basics of signal flow with this plugin. Essentially, the outputs of each track with the UHD producer plugin are routed to the STA summing engine and output via plugins instantiated on two 7.1 aux tracks. That means that if you use the first two methods that we discussed in this tutorial, only the plugins feeding the STA summing engine will be rendered to your final file. If you want to apply effects after the summing engine, things like limiters, for example, you'll need to create your final files using an internal bounce. In this session, I've instantiated identical limiters after the STA summing plugin on each of the two 7.1 auxiliary input tracks. I'll then assign the output of each of these tracks to individual 7.1 audio tracks. For any experienced Pro Tools user, this is an adaptation of the standard internal bounce workflow. The result will be that the first destination audio track will be STA outputs 1 through 8, and the second one will be outputs 9 through 16. If you're going to use an internal bounce, there's one important thing to keep in mind with regard to channel orders. With the first two methods, the channel order reflects the order of channels going into the STA summing engine, or the Y axis of the matrix assigned. With internal bouncing, the channel order will reflect the order of the signals leaving the STA summing engine, or the X axis of the matrix assigned. This means that any changes that you make to the assignments in the matrix section of the mix window will affect the order of channels that are being recorded on the two 7.1 audio tracks. And that takes us to the end of our discussion on creating your deliverable mix files using the STA UHD producer plugin. Other videos in the series will look more in depth at how to set up your Pro Tools session, different features, and even some tips and tricks. To learn more, visit sonictieredu.com learning.